Welcome back to Go Capital. Um, this is our first class, basic one, lesson two. And I want to welcome you to class. Today we'll be dealing with quite a lot of things and I really want you to go and take up your pen, your notebook, as this is important for you. You know, one of the reasons why some persons come here to YouTube to watch videos and they don't get value for what they see is because they don't take note of what they see. So I would like you to treat this as urgent, treat it serious, go carry a notebook and a pen and write down important points that you should write down. Uh, when you write down, it kind of stick with you. Do you understand? So uh, with that said, let's go to class. All right, before the class, I want to give a disclaimer. Trading leveraged products such as forests, derivatives, commodities, melters, binary and crypto may not be suitable for all investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital. The materials and slides shared in this video are simply for education purposes. Go Capital will not be responsible for any loss incurred as a result of the information shared. This video is my personal opinion and you agree that whatever actions you take based on them is strictly at your own risk. This video is not a financial advice, simply for education purposes. All right, let's go to class. Last week, we, sorry, last class, we stopped at major currency pairs and we mentioned that uh, currency pairs that are of these eight, these eight are what we refer to as major currency pairs because they belong to major economies and this is their names. There are eight in number and the first is the US dollar the second is the European Euro, then uh, the third is the Japanese Yen, the fourth is the British Pound, the fifth is the Swiss Franc, the sixth is the Canadian Dollar, the seventh is the Australian Dollar, and eighth is the New Zealand Dollar. And we gave the symbols and we talked about their nicknames as well. So you can refer to the previous class uh in order for you to recap so now we're going to go into the next topic major currency pairs major currency categories sorry there's an error in that typography so it's categories currency pairs categories there are three major categories of currency pairs number one is called the majors the majors so the majors, they are the major currencies, which is those, those eight we talked about in the last slide, in the previous slide. You know that we, we mentioned eight currency pairs that are major. Now, when you pair any of them with the US dollar, it becomes a major currency pair. So a major currency pair is the one that is, is a major currency paired with the US dollar. So they are called the majors. Then the crosses. The crosses, they have uh, they are different types. We have the major crosses that are paired with the euro. They are called the euro crosses. Then we have the one that are crossed with the pound, which is GPB. They are called the pound crosses. We have the ones that are crossed with the JPY, which is, they are called the yen crosses. And we have the other ones that are paired with uh, Swiss franc, Canada dollar, and the New Zealand dollar. So these other ones, they are other crosses. So, what is different between the majors and these crosses? The majors are the major currency paid with the US dollar. So when you carry a major currency and you pay it to the US dollar, it's a major. But when you pay 
another major currency with another major currency is a cross and then exotic so you are going to take an assignment from here and the assignment will be what are exotics so what are exotics that's the assignment here on this slide the assignment is uh read about exotic pairs <clears throat> now um the major currencies like i said before are the currencies that are paid with the us dollar there there, there are eight of them before look at them here this is euro this is jpy this is gbb this is a swiss franc this is a card aud and nzd these are the seven excluding the us dollar if you add the us dollar there will be eight in number now the majors when you pay the us dollar to each of these you call them major currency pairs i told you that in the forex market we trade currency in pairs we don't trade currency in a single you cannot sell a currency and not get anything so when you are selling a currency you are buying another one when you are buying a currency you are selling another one so that is the way it is so currency are traded in pairs do you understand a pair means two a pair means two so the, the euro paired with the us dollar makes it a major currency pair because the euro is a major currency and it is paired with the us dollar so it is called a major currency pair now this is the jpy you take this jpy now you pay with the us dollar then this is the gbb you pay with the us dollar this is chf you pay with the us dollar this is CAD, you pay with the US dollar. This is AUD, you pay with the US dollar. And this is NZD, you pay with the US dollar. When this is done, you will have seven in total. So now the assignment we're going to take from this page is going to be two. Number one, why is it Euro USD and not USD Euro? Like, why is it Euro USD and not the other way around? Why is it USD JPY and not JPY USD? Why is it GBB USD and not USD GBB? Why is the arrangement like this? So this is going to be your homework that you are going to do. So answer it for yourself and that, that's going to be for your own benefit. So now uh, the majors are the most liquid in the world. The most liquid means they are the most traded. They are the most volatile. They are the ones that have the most volume in transactions day on a daily basis so people buy and sell them on a daily basis with more with high volume do you understand so that's what it means to be liquid then the majors are also what i already said the currency paid with the us dollar okay so with this said and done we'll go to the next slide the crosses like i said before when you take all the other major currencies excluding the us dollar and you pair them with one another it is called crosses so the ones that are crossed with the euro with the european euro is called they are called the euro crosses so euro paired with c shape now if you look at this this is euro so we'll carry the euro and put it here now we we'll pair it with c shape we we'll pair it with gbp we pair with CAD, we pair with AUD, we pair with NZD, we pair with the remaining five. So we pair with the remaining six because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven of the major currencies excluding the US dollar. So these seven pick the euro and pair it with the remaining uh, six. You will have six euro crosses. So now in this case, all of the euro are on the left. They are on the left. The currency that is on the left is called the base. Don't worry, I'm going to teach all of this later on in basic two. So it's called the base. So the base currency here is the euro. Do you understand? So and um, for these ones, you pay it with it, and you have the euro crosses. Then moving on to the next one, the pound crosses. The pound crosses are the one that are paired with the pound. So now that you have, paid, you have used the euro to cross all of them, the euro will no longer be in this equation again. So it will remain six. Do you understand? So it will remain six out of this. So when you pick the pound, you cross the remaining four with it, the remaining five with it. So you cross with this, with AUD, with CD, with NZD, you're going to have five. 
So in this case too, the GBB is also at the left, which is the base. So there's a reason for all of this. You are going to check in the assignment that I gave to you. So you, you go find out why is it that this one is at the base and not at the uh, quote side. Because the one at the left is called the base, the one on the right is called the quote. So we'll do that later in basic two. So then um, the yen crosses. Now that you have paired with euro and GBP, we'll be left with five. So you pick the JPY now and you cross with the remaining four. So you have four of them here. So, and in this case, JPY is not on the left, it's on the right throughout all of them. Do you understand? So then um, the remaining ones, since you have done Euro, JBB, and JPY, what is remaining is going to be the card. So when you pick the card, you pair with the remaining three. So which is card, CHF, AUD card, and NCD card. Then you are finished with, this, uh, with the card. So now you are with the CHF. Pick the CHF and you pair with the remaining two. C AUD, CHF, NCD, CHF. So what's remaining is this and this pair with one another and that is the end of it so these are the uh the crosses how many are the numbers one two three four five six eleven fifteen twenty one so there are twenty one in number so these are the crosses do you understand so forest market sections forest market sections the forest market is opened 24 hours a day during the weekdays which allows traders to potentially trade all day and all night so knowing the forest markets operating hours is essential for a trader you need to know when the forest market opens and closes as well uh, you need to know when it opens you know when it closes in fact, as well as the four main trading sessions, you need to know all of this. So the forest market can be broken up into four major trading sessions. Number one is the Sydney session. Number two is the Tokyo session. Number three is the London section. Number four is the New York session. Now, the Sydney session and the Tokyo session combined together are known as the Asian session the Asian session so the Asian session is a combination of the Sydney session and the Tokyo session so some uh, in some materials that you may find either online or in stores you may not see this uh, Sydney and Tokyo session what you just see is Asian session so the Sydney session and the Tokyo session are combined as the Asian session the sydney and tokyo is the asian session when combined together so this is the the sydney session it opens at 10 pm and closes at 7 am gmt plus one i'm using gmt plus one because i'm in nigeria and i most most of my audience are nigerians so but this particular chart you are seeing up here is in GMT. Do you understand? So you refer to this and use it to compare with your own time zone. So GMT time, market starts by nine o'clock in the night. But for us who are in GMT plus one, it's actually 10 p.m. for us here. So the Sydney session opens at 10 p.m. on Sunday night. On Sunday night. On Sunday night, 10 p.m. And then it closes at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. And then the Tokyo session will open. So you notice that while the Sydney session is still on, the Tokyo session opened in between, open at 10 at 1 a.m. in the midnight. So this particular time that the Tokyo session opened is still while the Sydney session is still on and then it lasts till 10 a.m. which is it lasts till about uh, three hours after the closure of the Sydney session. So this particular period where the Sydney session 
and these two queue sessions are on together is called overlap. It's called overlap. 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 O V E R L A P. Overlap. So this is the Sydney Tokyo overlap. Then um, the London session opens at 8 a.m. This is GMT plus one and closes at 5 p.m. GMT plus one. So you can look at the chart and you can also see that there's an overlap between the Tokyo session and the London session. Then also the New York section opens at uh, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, 1 p.m. GMT plus one and closes at 10 p.m. GMT plus one. So you will notice that there's also an overlap between this London session and the New York session. Now, most traders believe that there is high volume of trade when two sessions are overlapped. Of course, that can be respected because there are uh, transactions going on in two sessions at the same time. So volume in, the volume is high during overlap. Do you understand? And some people refer to that as the best time to trade. So why that is true, it may not always be true, but it is true that the best time to trade is during overlap. But it may not always be the case because you can have an overlap and market is not moving. Do you understand? So, but the best time to trade are during overlaps. Now, the London session and the New York session also have an overlap. The London and the New York session. So this is the most volatile section, the most volatile period when the London session overlaps the New York session. At this point, market is always very, very liquid, very, very volatile because there's so much volume going on in very big markets in the world. Do you understand? So the overlap of the New York and the London is a very good time to trade. But the main trading session is from between this time to this time. You understand? So, but actually you can trade any time of the day as a trader you will need to know when to enter your trade and when to leave. Don't worry, I will teach you all of this in the advanced class. I will teach you the most active sessions of the day that you can take your, that you can be taking your trades during those times when you enter, you have a high probability of making profit. Whether you like it or not, there is a good time to trade. There is a bad time to trade. Why am I saying this? You can't trade on Saturdays because during Saturday, the market is closed. So if you say there is no time to trade, then you are wrong. So there is a time to trade. And even the weekdays, there are times to trade and make profit. So you will learn all of this as we progress. All right, let's go to the session in detail. The Sydney session. The Sydney session opens at 10 p.m. midnight. Sorry, in the night on Sunday and then it, it closes at 7 a.m. like I already said in the previous slide. So it is important to remember that the forest market opening hours will change in March, April, October and November as countries move to daylight savings on different days. So you know because of daylight saving time there are going to be changes in the, in the times where all of the sessions open. So I'm going to show you a place where you will know the time the session is opening every day, depending on your locality. So I'm going to show you a site for you to know the correct time that your market is going to open. So another characteristics of this Sydney session is that it has low liquidity, low volume, that is there is not really so much happening during this uh, session. No much buying and selling. Market is just quiet during this section. Then the Sydney session. Let's go. Let's go to Tokyo session. Tokyo opens from 1 a.m. to 10 a.m. And remember, all of these are also subject to daylight saving time. So you will still know when this time this session is going to open based on that site I'm going to show to you. So what are the characteristics of this uh, Tokyo session? Number one, the liquidity can sometimes be very thin. Sometimes, so there are times that the market can have real volume as well, but the general characteristics of this session is that it has low liquidity as well. 
as compared with other sections like the London and the New York section, which have more volatility. So the second characteristic is that it is more likely that you will see stronger moves in Asian Pacific currencies like Australian dollar, uh, which is the AUD paired with the US dollar. You are going to see moves also in the NZD during these times as well. So most of the pairs that you can really see that there is volatility or there's something happening in during this section is the AUD USD. The NZD, those coin, those um, uh, currency pairs that moves in the Asia Pacific, uh, uh, those Asia, sorry, sorry, something is distracting me. So all those uh, currency pairs that move uh, uh, in the Asia Pacific. So all of those ones, they like all of these ones I just show you now, AUD and NZD, they are the ones that move during this time. Then during those times of thin liquidity most pairs may stick within a range the range is uh, markets moving in a sideways kind of movement is neither trending upwards nor trending downwards you are going to learn this also later on in the class not in this class but in the advanced class now in the tokyo session as well we also know that uh, moves in the tokyo session could set the tone for the rest of the day moves in the tokyo session could set the tone for the rest of the day typically after big moves in the preceding new york session you may see consolidation during the tokyo session so normally uh, the range is also what we call a consolidation but in a multiple sense i'm going to explain all of this in the advanced classes so in this uh, tokyo session one of the things you discover is uh, when the new york session have closed you are going to see market being quiet moving into the uh, sydney session because we told we said we i told you before that in the sydney session market is quiet like market has low volatility so because of that market moves into a consolidation or into a range do you understand so that's what happens after the, after new york you enter the sydney again which is a quiet most quiet section so uh looking at this number four here the whatever happened in this tokyo session could set the tone could set the pace for the rest of the day since it's the beginning of the day now since the tokyo session is when news from australia new zealand and japan comes out this presents a good opportunity to trade news events that are involved with involving all these uh, AUD pairs nzd pairs and japan uh, jpy pairs do you understand so then also there could be more movement in yen pairs, as a lot of yen is changing hands, as Japanese companies are contented businesses. So take note that China is also an economic superpower. So whenever news comes out from China, it tends to create volatile moves as well. Then also with Australian and Japan relying heavily on Chinese demand, we could see greater movement in AUD and JPY pairs when Chinese data comes in. So in a nutshell, when you are one trying to trade in this session, what you should be looking at is AUD pairs, JPY pairs, and also NZD pairs. So in the advanced class, I'm going to show you how to trade this session in the midnight. Yes, you can make money in this session as well. All right, um, the next one here is the London section, the London session. So the London session opens from 8 a.m and all this also depends on daylight saving time i'm going to show you that site don't worry where you will know when the market is starting for you depending on your time on your on your on your zone so the london session because uh it crosses with two other major sessions like i showed you before if you go back to that uh, chart if you pause the video and go back you will find out that uh the london session overlaps two sessions at the beginning of the london session it overlaps with the previous session, which is in Sydney, while at the middle uh, or at the end of it, it overlaps with the New York session, which is the last session of the day. So uh, because the London session crosses with two other major trading sessions and with London session being such a, with London being such a key financial center, a large chunk of uh, forex transactions takes place during this time. So this leads to high liquidity 
uh, potential uh, potentially lower transaction cost as well so that is a lower pip spread i will tell you what all of this means later on what is the pip or the spread i will tell you what this is then due to the large number of transactions that takes place the london trading session is normally the most volatile session the most volatile session so this is where transaction takes place a lot then um you see that most trends begin during the London session and they typically will continue until the beginning of the New York session. Take note of all of these points because they are very important. We're going to be employing all of this uh, when we are trading later on. Then volatility tends to die down in the middle of the session as traders often go off to eat lunch before waiting for the New York trading period to begin. So trends can sometimes reverse at the end of the London session as European traders may decide to lock in profits. So because of the volume of transactions that takes place, there is so much liquidity during the European session that almost any pair can be traded. Almost any pair can be traded. So the majors, which is the Euro USD, GBB USD, USD JPY, USD CHF, at any other one normally have the tightest spread. Okay, all these ones have the tightest spread, but you can trade any of the currencies, currency pairs during this uh, um, London session. So also, it is the in, it is these pairs that are normally directly influenced by any news reports that comes out during the European session. So like all these Euro USD, GBP USD, they are affected by news reports very well. Then the yen crosses more specifically euro jpy and gbp jpy uh, tend to be pretty volatile at this time why because this is the time that the euro and the gbp is very active so the jpy will be active at this time as well do you understand so during this session you'll be expecting to make more 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 money so and in nigerian time it is 8 a.m do you understand so i'm, I'm still going to show you the site where you will need to uh, know where market will start for you, depending on where you are in the world. Then uh, the last session we'll talk about is the New York session. The New York session opens from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. So and there is high liquidity during the morning as it overlaps with the European session. So most economic reports are released near the start of the new york session all these things i'm telling you these are big points you should take note of these are very important points most economic reports are released near the start of the new york session so about 85 percent of all trades involve the dollar so whenever big time u.s economic data is released it has the potential to move the market so this is really where the u.s dollar start moving you understand like really really move so much so also on fridays there is a chance of reversals in the second half of the session as us traders close their positions ahead of the weekend so if you are on usd trades uh, on fridays you should know that you should be looking forward to close at the second half of this new york session when it's already getting to around six o'clock seven o'clock in the evening you should be thinking of closing your positions because at this time major traders will be closing their positions preparing for weekends do you understand so they take note that there will be a ton of liquidity as both the us dollar if at the us and the european markets they will be open at the same time so big markets are involved in this session so there will be much volatility there will be much liquidity in the market for you to uh, benefit from now this allows you to trade virtually any pair although it should be best if you stop with major and minor pairs so i'm going to actually advise you to stick with the major pairs and a few of the minor pairs so i'll show you them in the advanced class avoid this way avoid those ones that are weird all those exotic pairs that you have you must have studied in your assignment because i told you to go and read about the exotic pairs so study them do you understand so uh should um these reports Okay, let me, this is the next point. Also, because the US dollar is on the other side of the majority of transactions, everybody will be paying attention to the US data that is released. 
Do you understand? So, to be, they will be paying attention to the US data report that is released. Then, should this report come in better or worse than expected, it could dramatically shake up the market as the dollar will be jumping up and down. Okay? All right, guys. So, this is what I talked about the site that I will show you how to use uh, uh, to know your time zone. So you just come to your browser and type forestfactory.com and you click enter. So once you click on it, the site is going to load. Just check this on your browser, okay? So uh, the site will look like this. It may not look like this. So what you will do is you don't really need to join. You don't need to create an account with them. You can create an account with them by joining or you can log in as well. So, but what you're actually going to do here, first of all, is to make sure you uh, go to the bottom. So, and click on this live, this, check this box. So when you check this box, you're actually receiving live data straight. So here, my time is showing 10.49 a.m. local. So how do you set this to your local time? So you just come to the top of the page. This is it here, actually. Just click on this time. So when you click on this time, it will open up for you to synchronize your time zone. So I'm a GMT plus one, you see? So if you are in a different time zone, you have to just look for the time zone and click OK. So when you click on it, you save settings. So the site will load and give you accurate data. Do you understand? To give you data in line with your time zone, it will synchronize automatically. So your own is to now go back to home go back by clicking here so you go to the bottom and you will see where when all of the session are starting please hold on my my site is loading i have uh, so many calls coming in so my network is kind of being disrupted so you will see that from here me in gmt plus uh one market opens for me today at 10 pm in the night so then it closed at 7 am this morning, that's for the Sydney section. Then for the Tokyo, it opened at 1 a.m. and closed at um, at uh, 10 a.m. Then it, the New York session, the London session opened at 8 and it's going to close at 5 p.m. And then this uh, New York session is opening at 1 o'clock and then it's going to close at 10 again. So that's how you know when it's going. So every day you wake up, this is what you do in order for you to know the time your market is going to open and know where you are. Okay. All right. So that will be it for this uh, lesson. Uh, we are going to visit two in our next class. Do you understand? So I would like to join you to revise all we've done so far, learn, uh, do the assignments, and please like the video subscribe to the channel click the notification bell for updates so that when i drop any video you will be reminded by youtube automatically that a video has been dropped you know i said i'm dropping video tuesdays thursday and saturdays so but when you click that bell youtube will automatically remind you of the class so all right with that said and done share to your friends like subscribe and good luck.